Hey guys, it's uh, Christian in New Orleans again with a very quick little update video. Um, past weeks have not been incredibly fruitful. Uh, I have a very small stack to show you tonight. Uh, and this will probably do it before Christmas, I expect. Um, but then I, I'm, you know, immediately following. I'm sure there's going to be some more stuff to show you all. So, um, getting right on with it. Uh, a couple of of days ago I guess I went and hit all the used stores uh, around town or whatever it's a completely fruitless uh, trip out you know and uh, just got incredibly incredibly frustrated uh, not finding anything at all that I, that that was interesting to me and I, I browsed on over at the uh, CD section of one particular store and uh, and CDs are not a big uh, you know, listen, I could go on and on about CDs. It's not my thing, I don't collect them. Um, I, I have owned in the past uh, enough of a, a metal CD collection and lost enough of a metal CD collection to make anybody sick. In fact, it nauseates me thinking about it. But at any rate, uh, I digress and I, I found this and uh, it interested me and I picked it up and the price was dirt cheap. It's Skeleton which it's I think their demo it's Worship the Witch. If you can see that, there's no label listed on it. That's the back. And I compared it to Beyond the Permafrost, which I own that 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 record or whatever. And every track on here, except for the last one, Forever in the Abyss, is uh, is on Permafrost. And I think this, um, I mean, I could be totally wrong about it. Um, I think this is around 2000 or so. Um, not much to the, the inner card or whatever. It's almost identical to the, uh, minus the logo, as the front cover of it. And, uh, this is the disc or whatever. Um, anyway, it's pretty neat. Uh, I'm a Skeleton Witch fan, so I was happy to pick this up. Uh, I don't know anything about it. I don't think it was ever released on vinyl. Um, which makes it, you know, even... I'm happy with the purchase knowing that it was never released on vinyl. I guess is what I'm, I'm saying. And I guess this is self-released. I mean, there is literally no record label information on it. There's no serial number. There's nothing like that. So anyway, I mean, it's cool. It, it's If you have Beyond the Permafrost, then you're not missing much off of this. Uh, just that Forever in the Abyss uh, track or whatever. In the background tonight, we're jamming I Hate God's latest self-titled. Came out in 2014. I showed this in the uh, collection videos. I'll show it to you again. Um, okay, moving right along. Uh, the first up uh, tonight is, well, the first vinyl record I have to show you is uh, uh, St. Vitus, Mournful Cries. And um, let's see, that's the back right there. It's not a gatefold or anything. Uh, there is like an order form on the inside of it, which is kind of cool. I'll show that to you, but um, and I, I assume this is some sort of a repressing on SST Records. And yeah, I guess it, it tells you to send off six dollars. I, I don't know if this is just to completely replicate the original pressing or what. I I don't know. Anyway, that, that's it. Uh, it's just on black vinyl. Did I show you on the back? That's the back of it. I think. This is their last release for SST Records, and I'm pretty sure it's the last one. Uh, the next record doesn't feature Wino on, on vocals, I think. Um, I don't like this one as much as Born Too Late. However, I will say that, uh, let's see, that's the labels. I will say that this this record sounds an awful like, a lot like uh, Born Too Late. So if you, if you like Born Too Late, I would say check out Mournful Cries. Uh, it's worth a listen. Um, the uh, the first two tracks on this, the creeps and Dragon Tom are awesome, and I think the best track on the record is the last one. Uh, it's Looking Glass. So uh, yeah, I mean I'm a Vitus fan, so uh, to me um, I'm happy to have it. Um, I've only spun it one time, um, so I'm sure with subsequent listens it'll probably I'll probably warm up to it a little bit more. Um, like I said, uh, it sounds a lot like one, two, three, so, and that's a, that's a great, great record. So the next one 
Guys, I'm going to really lean on people who watch this uh, because I, even I have some questions about it. Uh, I bought this record used, and uh, it's Melvin's Live at Third Man Records, which I believe that's Jack White's uh, label, and they must do some kind of an open house thing. And if you look at the sticker up there, I'm going to try to get it where you can see it. It says it is uh, recorded live to acetate third man live I don't know if that means that what I have in my hands is acetate because I have very little which is to say zero experience with acetate records I have no idea what they're about I mean I know they exist I don't know what the pros versus cons are that with vinyl I, I have no idea and I don't even know if what I hold in my hands is acetate or if it just means that it was recorded live to acetate and then they pressed it on regular vinyl uh, I'm really not sure. I have not been able. I will say that it looks different. Like the grooves on the record look like almost non They're tiny, a little bitty. I mean, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get that to show up. But I mean, like on one side is one track. It's Sean McCormick Cat. So there, there would be no. You have lead-in grooves, and then there is no track grooves. Uh, and even when you flip to the other side, which has six tracks on it. You still cannot see any like any like track lines or anything like that. So I don't have any idea if what I have is acetate or not, but it comes in a nice poly sleeve or whatever. And that's like the record or whatever. You can see like the label from the inside because that's a cutout. Same thing on the back side or whatever. Um, this is really good. I mean, it's Melvin's man, uh, you know. This is super, super thick, sludgy, sludgy stuff. Um, great record, uh, check it out. And this thing only cost me like 10 bucks. And it, yeah, I mean, I was ecstatic to have it. I'm, I'm a pretty big Melvin's fan. And then the very last thing for tonight uh, is something really cool for a band that I am just, man, head over fucking heels for. Uh, it's Paul Bearer and it's their 2010 demo. That's the front cover. This is on 20 bucks spin. On fucking believable demo from Paul Bearer. That's the uh, back cover. Um, looks. A, this is a repressing. It's a reissue. It looks a little bit different than the original. Uh, the original pressing of this. Uh, I think this is actually like a. This is like a caricature. A caricature of like a real photo, which comes on the original or whatever. But on. Fucking real heavy, man. I, I mean, the first jam on this is The Legend, I think is the name of the track. Oh, man. That's as good as, to me, is... And the back is, it's just three tracks long. That's the front. And the back is just an etching. I don't know if you can see that or how well that's going to show up. Fucking beautiful, beautiful etching. Incredible, doomy, fucking Paul Bearer-ish etching on the back. Uh, this thing is fucking thick. Unbelievable. I mean, man, this is so fucking good. Uh, I, yeah, there's something. There's just a, a sheet on the inside. Uh, just a credit sheet or whatever. And that's the jam I was talking about. Holy shit, is that awesome. The riff on that is on fucking real. Uh, I'm, the back is blank. There's nothing to it. Uh, huge Paul Bear fan, man. Uh, and that's a band that I, I got into in the last couple of years. And man, I've been snapping up every single thing I get my hands on by uh, Paul Bear. Um, man, this is whew, unreal, dude. Definitely check out Paul Bear. Fucking love him. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I told you this, the, the pickings have been slim recently, so that's all I've got for tonight. But. Um, I'm sure I'll be back after Christmas with some good stuff. So, anyhow, well, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Keep metal here.